Kunde Bido ya Kodunde Koda Ewo Yamu Yamu Ewo Ayo Bi Ayo Tesuru Lui Opo Hallelujah Tia Baka Hallelujah Dada Yamu Yamu Afolo Bobo Nko Tole Jebi Aron Buru Kutole De Yomale Ade Disapia Lese Kese Hallelujah Eche Kupo Eche Kupo Adu pelo wa olorun to da emi emi ati re si ti a wa ni bi ile ni lati le je jeri si ajodun odun kefa We thank the Lord that he has sustained us to see the 6th anniversary of this church Won ki gbogbo awon ti ko wa bi ri to je pe akoko mo de ki wo gba awon eyan to je pe o wa nbi ni odun to koja Olorun tun ka ye o tun wa nbi ile ni I greet all those that have come here for the first time I also greet those that have been here before, especially those that came last year. Hallelujah. Do you know what happened? It is a woman who is very enthusiastic. They have a head of Gary. That's cassava. If you, put, if you put a little bit of water inside Gary, it begin to swell until it becomes something big. But the men, but the men, their head is like that of sand. You know I'm a man as well. And it doesn't matter how much you put, um, water you put on sand, it will begin to reduce. In the name of Jesus, we will be revived. I greet you again. When I go to a harvest, it is it 365 days, 52 weeks? When you have a harvest festival like this, you have to make sure you are a partaker of it. You will do all your best to be a partaker of it. Because there are 365 days, 52 weeks, and 12 months of thanks that you need to offer unto God. There is no fetish priest that we sacrifice unto. All that we do is give unto God. He has given unto us life, and he says in the Bible that he will bless a hand that brings unto him. But if you come unto him empty-handed, you cannot receive his blessing. Many people come. Amongst those, many people have come here, but not everybody is going to take something home. But amongst those that are going to take the blessing of the Lord home, you are one of them in Jesus' name. The Bible lesson, Second Chronicles 20, 21 to 30. First Peter 3 to 9. It's very, very important words. God has many names. The Lord of the whole world. And when there was tribulation, do you know what happened? Jehovah. 
When it came to the crux of the matter, the Lord told Moses, tell Pharaoh, my name is Jehovah. When it was very tough. Jehovah. He says, I am. My name is Jehovah. The reason. When we pray in the celestial church of Christ, we start with Jehovah because he introduced himself to Pharaoh with that name. And you see that the key of prayer we have in the celestial church of Christ is Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Michael. The ignorant says that we worship angels. But I do not see a situation whereby you can call on the Father and you cannot call on the Son. And when you call on the Father, you call on the Son. Definitely you have to call upon his uh, servant and his messenger, which is the Holy Spirit. You call on Jehovah, Jesus Christ, and Holy Michael. When, when the Lord introduced himself to Moses, God told Moses, I am Jehovah. And that's why our father in Christ, when you knock on his door and he says, who is it? If you say, I am, he will not answer you because you are not Jehovah. Jehovah. If you have come here because of that name Jehovah, Definitely, Jehovah will answer you in Jesus' name. And when the Lord was speaking in the Bible, he spoke about Abraham. He spoke about Isaac. And he spoke about Jacob. Three generations of the same tribe. You find out that the great troubles of man or in the life of man can be attributed to Jehovah. Look at this man that sat down by the beautiful gate. He was blind. And they searched for the reasons why he was blind, but they could not find the reason. But when Jesus retirement <laughs> We are talking about Jehovah and we are explaining Jehovah to you. When Jesus Christ returned, he was wearing a royal garment. But that garment did not have any seams where it was actually sewn. 
and then you find out that the, um, the men begin to struggle to actually see who would have the clothes of Christ because it was full of blessing. If you follow Jehovah, definitely what you need, the Lord will grant it unto you. There are so many things that the Lord created in this world. He created it so that you and I can enjoy it, so that we do not suffer, so that we do not want. Look at the story of a man who has studied so much and has an important, uh, 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 is an important personality, but seeks for a job and cannot find one. That is one example. The second example is another man who has read, is well read and has a very good employment, but in the month he was entitled to retirement, he was sacked and he could not retire at all. Or a third example, a man who is well read, has a good job and retired and on the day he went to receive the retirement check, the man died and all the money came to nothing. You need to glorify the Lord. The burden, what I'm explaining to you is the burden of man. God does not care if you are rich. God does not care if you are poor. In fact, it is not God's concern if you are sick. All God wants to know is that you come before him as a delightful person to rejoice in his presence. The Lord has the burden on his own head in the, in the life of those who dedicate themselves to him. And that's why you find out that some people will start a foundation of a house, will build the house, will complete it and furnish it. And then they will sit down and think, I did not borrow money to do this. I am not in debt to do this. That means the Lord has taken the burden on himself. And therefore, when you have a burden upon yourself, it is not the concern of God. All God wants to know is that you present yourself before him. And the prayer is, as you have come into the presence of the Lord, you will not go empty-handed in Jesus' name. You think there was a man, he had no job, and all he did was sleep in the church. The food that the shepherd eats is what the individual eats. It was in the church that he wrote an application. It was while he was in the church that he got a job. And when he got a job, he had so much money that he was able to leave the church and rent a house. But the tragedy is, when he started to earn the money, when it was time for general collection, he would bunch up an empty hand, put it into the collection basket, put an empty hand into it, bring it out, and begin to laugh. It doesn't contribute. No. The tithes, it doesn't contribute. No. When harvest comes, it doesn't pay his levy. You find that his friends and the members of the church were telling him what you are doing is not good. 
and he took them as an enemy. What our Father in Christ is telling you is that if you are doing something that is not right, and you find someone that is pinching you, telling you, stop what you are doing, change. That person, you, person is giving you something that is worth a lot. What I'm promoting is a promotion. Higher one. Big one. You find out that this man, even though he was not contributing in the house of the Lord, his business was expanding. He was getting promotions. He was promoted from one stage to another. So much so he had money to buy a land. And he built a mighty house. But what happened was that there was a flood. And the flood demolished his house. 99 years was the last time there was a flood of such. When people came there, they were wondering where did the water come from? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know what happened? This man, he walked and he retired. And when he retired, he then assigned himself, he applied as a church worker and he became a shepherd of a church. He was assigned to a very big parish on a bad day, he had at least 500 members in his parish. But the tragedy of it for him was they never paid their tithes and they did not give collections. And it was not that somebody went to go and meet the members and say, that's what your shepherd used to do. But automatically, that's what happened in his church. And therefore, he had no money to fend for himself. And he had to go back as a fisherman. When he went to fish one day, he died in the stream. And they could not find his body till today. What the Lord wants from you is for you to give unto him. For the year that has passed, up to this moment, gather what you have sown and what you have reaped and bring it to the presence of God. You find out that the Lord is a Lord of perfection. He spoke unto you and he said that I am a God I am not a debtor. He says, whatever you give to me, I shall give back unto you. If you come unto the Lord with the, um, with the riches and which he has given unto you, definitely he will bless you. But if you come empty-handed unto the Lord, you will find out that even if you have a house and you have tenants in your house, your tenants will not pay you any dues at all. Exodus 23, 14. You see, the Lord is saying you should present yourself three times before him. When you come to him three times, present yourself as a living sacrifice, giving the dues which is owed unto God. That is the secret that the king Hezekiah used in the book of Isaiah 38. Don't read it. Go home and study it. Yes. Yes. 
This is the year 2013. From one parish to another. And they will be inviting you. And then you will be doing your dues. You will take out of the sweat of your, head, your brow. And you will leave it. And there will be great rousing reception. And wonders will happen. And they'll be looking at you as a consecrated and separated person. How does he do it? Three times a year, you will come before the Lord. The Lord says you must not come empty-handed. You have to give something. There is something in you. There is something with you that is not yours. And you need to let it go so that you can receive from the Lord what is yours. Thank you. These are the things that happen. The Lord doesn't want to come empty handed. You find that you need to come in the presence of the Lord. You will give to God what you have so that you can receive from the Lord what you don't have. You look at the story of Cain and Abel. Abel brought a beautiful offering unto the Lord. Cain brought an abhorrent offering unto God. The Lord accepted that of Abel and he rejected that of Cain. Cain was angry. He stood up to his brother and he killed him. The Lord required Abel from Cain and Cain said, Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord cursed Cain and he made him a wanderer. The Bible says that the Lord then cursed the ground so that he must sweat before he can get fruit. And look at this situation. That same ground is the ground we build our houses on. The same ground we have our beds on and we sleep on. That same ground is the ground that we walk upon. If the Lord causes the ground for you and I, we are in definite trouble. What the Lord is telling, what our Father in Christ is telling us today, that is the sacrifice of Noah that saved us. It doesn't matter how much in debt you are, how much it is difficult for you to live your life. You must never come before the presence of the Lord empty-handed. You see that no matter how difficult things are for you, you must not come empty-handed. And when you come to the presence of the Lord with your sacrifice, he will definitely bless you. But don't be like some others that will use uh, a deceitful tactic to steal from God. They will bring maybe five pounds so that they can change it to a smaller denomination. And at the end of it, they will take away 10, 10 or 20 pounds. You are stealing from God. God is watching you and he's going to chase you until you enter into the pit of debt. If you don't sow, you cannot have it. Yeah. 
if you do not sow, you cannot harvest. That is one. But number two, if you don't deposit money into an account, you cannot go to that account to redraw it. Because if you are caught, you will be charged for stealing. Only <laughs> Ah, me, Jesus. And that is the situation in the life of Elijah. He went unto this woman, he said, I am hungry, give me some food. And the woman said unto him, You know what? All I have is a little flower. And after this flower, me and my child, we are awaiting death because we have nothing else to eat. Despite hearing this, Elijah said, No, do mine first. The woman listened to him, cooked the food, and gave it unto Elijah. And through that, she became blessed. That is what the Lord is telling you right now. Do that of the Lord first. And when you answer unto the call of the Lord, the Lord will surely answer to the needs of your life. <laughs> What the Lord is telling you today is that you must, number two, present yourself before the Lord as a cheerful individual. Come before him and rejoice. You see, in the book of Second Chronicles, which was the first lesson, they went on to war. But they went with the musicians and the choir and they were singing unto the Lord. And you see that when the choir was singing earlier on, people stood up and began to dance. But the dance that they were dancing was a debtor's dance. Because they were dancing so much, but they were not putting any money down. And when you come to rejoice before the presence of the Lord, you see that when in the book of Chronicles, they came and they sang unto the Lord. When they sang unto the Lord, the Lord put confusion into the camps of the enemy and they destroyed themselves and they began to take the riches that their enemies left and the bible says that they rejoiced over their enemies the prayer of our father in christ is that today you will rejoice over your enemies
You need to know you need to know the God that you worship in this church. You see that the Lord has asked us to rejoice. He has asked us to come before his presence with singing and into his courts with praise. And that's why the Lord has asked us and when we read in the church Psalm 100 saying that we should come into the presence of the Lord. He will make a joyful noise unto the Lord and he lands and we should come with him with offerings and with all our petitions. We are the children of the Lord and we need to bless his holy name. We have secrets that the Lord has given to us in this church. And three songs which are just a tip of the iceberg that the Lord has given to us to overcome our enemies. The first song was rendered, Ya Kirai Ja Ulua. And he says that when that song is rendered, the ground will open and begin to swallow up your enemies. And the second song was Oluwa Duro Owa. That means the Lord is watching you and he will save you from the enemies. And when Holy Michael raised up his sword and we shout, Ja, then all of a sudden he cuts off the head of all the people that stands as an obstacle to you. And then when you have a sickness or an illness and you want to invite Christ into your life, and then you call Holy Spirit descend into our midst. And then the Holy Spirit comes upon your life. And then you are transformed into a living being. That is the power that is within the celestial church of Christ. When you are seeking for blessing from the Lord. And then you say that El Beraka Bered Eli, the Lord of blessing. And then the Lord will open the heavens and begin to shower the blessings upon you. Unless you know your God, you cannot receive the power from him. If you don't know how to serve him, he cannot enter into your life. It doesn't matter how much you sleep in the presence of the Lord. If your heart is not open to receive him, the same way you slept is the way you wake up. You cannot receive his power. But if you can receive the power of the Lord, sorry, if you can open your heart, you will surely receive the power of the Lord. If, if you do not know your God, you cannot receive the fullness of his joy. What our Father in Christ is letting us know is that you must know the Lord you worship. A person who is drunk 
and is totally enubriated. If he begins to sing, Holy Spirit, come into, my, uh, come into our midst, that spirit will come into him, but he will not be the spirit of God. It will be the spirit of witchcraft or wizardry. And you find out that that sort of person, the Holy Spirit cannot come near you. For you to have the true spirit, you make sure that your body, your soul, is in conformity with the precepts of God. When you are full of the spirit, every utterance that comes out of your mouth is an utterance of authority. And that's why you find out that many people, they pray and their prayers are not answered. Because they are not full of the genuine spirit of the Lord. To receive that spirit means to live a life of holiness, a life that is completely reserved for God and God only. Something happened someday. 1964. Somebody was sick. Long term. Something happened. Somebody was very, very sick. This was in 1964. And this almost, the person was almost dead. They now sent for us. They now said that we should go and pray for this person. It was our father in Christ and um, Pastor Maforikon, you know him. If you see him, you can ask him about this story. And as we were going on the way, there was a path that we had to use on feet. And as we were walking, we saw a pile of coals, very hot coals. And it was very, very furious fire. The coals were very hot. And at that point, I wanted to turn and run. But Papa Marforikon said to me, you must not run. Because if you run, you are in trouble. He said, it is all good. You are the one in front. You find out that as we were going on that day, there was this furious coal in front of us. And then we began to pray. And as we were praying, the fire on the coal stopped. As we were about to walk, the fire started again. And we prayed. And then the, the fire came down. As we went the third time, the fire started again. And then we began to sing this song, Holy Spirit descend into our midst. And then we prayed again. And as we were singing the song and we were praying, we advanced. And the fire wanted to erupt again, but it had no power anymore. And as we wanted to step upon the coal, all of a sudden the coal became a woman. 
This is not a dream or a vision. This happened in real life to, my, um, to him and to Pama Furikon. He turned into a woman. And the woman now told him, he now said, I have tied that woman down. You want to go and release her. You must not go. And they told her that, how can we not go? We have to go and do the work that the Lord has sent us. If there is anybody that has tied you down, the Lord will release you in Jesus' name. And therefore, they now proceeded into the village. When they got there, they met many herbalists with their equipment of office. And they told them to clear all their equipment out of that room. And then they began to, um, began to use incense in, in, the, in the room. A lot of incense to rebuke the evil spirits. And they began to sing and they began to pray. A woman that had not come off her bed for seven days. Then she sat on her bed on her own. And then they prayed for her again. And then they told her to go and bath. When she went to bath, she was supported by two people, one on the left and one on the right. And on her return, she returned on herself, by herself. And all she was saying was, wow, this is me. This is me. This is me. Because the Lord has released her from her bondage. The prayer of our Father in Christ again is that every bondage that you have been tied down in, the Lord will set you free today in Jesus' name. This was what was going on to people of Judah during the time of King Ezekiah. When they were going to the war, all they did was they put the choristers in the front and they began to sing. They sang so much, there was confusion in the camps of the enemy. And they began to fight each other and they lost the battle. The Lord is a powerful God. All you want, he wants from you is for you to rejoice and is for you to give him offerings of thanks. The Lord is a Lord that gives and is a Lord that can work miracles in your life. Look at that fruit. The person that planted the fruit, on the day he or she harvested it, she looked at it and they were all very happy because they have reaped something great. Nevertheless, that fruit has now been imported into this country and one of us is going to take it home. Definitely, as we take it home, the blessing of the Lord is going to go home with us in Jesus' name. Only <laughs> Music. Music. 
That was the weapon that the Lord gave unto the men of God. Music. Their enemies had swords. They had different kind of weapons. They had spears. But all the Lord used was music. When the music was playing, the enemies began to kill themselves. They beat themselves. They stabbed themselves until they utterly destroyed themselves. And the children of God began to rejoice. Music. The choristers have given us music. Many of them, they have done night vigils over and over again to make sure they produce beautiful music unto the house of the Lord. And definitely as those musics are being played, all the wars or the tribulations of our life, the Lord shall surmount them in Jesus' name. That lesson in 2018. When they began to sing, yes, 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 what did the Sira want? Or our Sira? Amen, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the, the choristers were singing. And as they were singing, the three countries that were trying to fight against Judah, the Amorites began to fight against Seir. Seir and Amorites began to fight against Moab. Moab and the Amorites and the Seans began to fight against each other and, and they utterly destroyed each other. Your enemies shall destroy each other in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. Yes. Benny. Benny. Si kiesi. O ni won. Ni ibi to ti sise. Ni inu ebi to ti wa. You are walking. They don't let you have rest. Today they will destroy themselves in Jesus name. Uh huh. Benny. Lati ko ikogun. Or I won't put your I won't cook in your one lost look on all the jolly. One of cook and cook and about to cook. Oh, so to a lodger make you laugh. Oh, a the Amorites, the Moabites, and the people from Seir, they had already gone to another country to plunder their wealth. But when they came against each other and they destroyed each other, the children of Judah went there and began to take the wealth of their enemies. The prayer of our Father in Christ is that today you will eat and you shall claim the wealth of your enemies in Jesus' name. Second lesson. Very quickly. So I can Lack of permanent residency, unemployment, those are the tests. But because you are here today, because to rejoice God, from today, the problems in your life will turn to joy in Jesus' name. Let us rejoice in victory. Rejoice. Go 
Lift up the glory of the Lord. If there's anybody that is dancing, don't just leave the person. The person that has heard and the person that makes you err, uh, they are going to the same place. You find out that if you leave the problems of your life and then you rejoice in the Lord, the Lord is going to take over the problems that you have in your life. Rise up onto your feet. I've spoken so much. Rise up onto your feet. The choristers, are you here? Have you, have you, have you, have you got a song? Chorus? If you have a good song, render it. Let's see what you have. That would make people rejoice. 